<laughs> well, a singer Kenny Loggins once sang, this is it. We're talking about Sooners and Cowboys, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Bedlam, the 111th edition, Saturday morning at 1130 at Gaylord Memorial. Sooners come in as a double-digit favorite. Last time I checked, a 12-point favorite. Of course, State bragging rights, but also two for the second straight year. It is the de facto Big 12 championship as the defending conference champ Sooners will try to do what they did last year, and that is take care of the Cowboys in impressive fashion. Do I think Oklahoma wins this game? Yeah. Do I think that they do it like they did last year? I would be shocked if that happens. I remember last year the Sooners um, you know, took advantage of an injury riddled Oklahoma State team, went into um, T. Boone Pickett Stadium, and laid an absolute five-touchdown margin victory, stunning the nation, and, of course, kind of pulling themselves to the college football playoff. Well, before we get into the matchup between the Sears and Cowboys this year, um, talk about a few things. Number one, of course, the college football playoff, as you probably already know, it would be one of the biggest shocks ever if the winner of this game got there. Um, the Big 12 this year just does not stack up to the other conferences. Um and all you got to do is just look at the teams in there. I mean, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, I mean, they're good. They're in the top 10. But then you look at West Virginia, you know, they're a top 25 team. And then after that, the competition is anywhere from mediocre to just flat out embarrassing. Heck, even Texas couldn't beat, um, you know, Kansas this year. Matter of fact, only six of the 10 teams in the league are bowl eligible in terms of victories, okay? That means you have four teams out of 10, nearly half the league, that didn't win at least six games. So no wonder you know, the Big 12 gets a, a bad rap, and I think this year um, it's uh, deservedly so. Um, the latest rankings, uh, matter of fact, Colorado um, just passed Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Colorado at number eight, OU and OSU at number nine and number 10, respectively. That means that if you look at any possible scenario or scenarios and combine them, it's impossible for the Sooners and Cowboys to leapfrog Colorado in the final standings if the Buffaloes should pull off the impossible and beat Washington, or if um, Virginia Tech upsets Clemson. You know, that'd be even more of a surprise in my opinion. Even if those two scenarios happen, Alabama, Ohio State, who I do believe will get in despite not winning their conference, their, their resume is pretty impressive. The Big Ten champion and Colorado beating a top five team in Washington, having 11 wins, something either Oklahoma or Oklahoma State will not have. They won't get to 11 wins and they won't have a win over a top-five team. So no way the Cowboys or Sooners could pass Colorado if the Buffs and the Hokies both won. Um, that would be the only scenario where some might say, well, here's Oklahoma or Oklahoma State's chance, the winner of Bedlam. But um, to me, I don't think that's going to happen at all. I think this will be for the Big 12 championship, but still, you know, it's for a pretty nice trip, major bowl, and New Orleans and the Sugar Bowl against an SEC team. So you're still playing for a lot, you're just not playing for the Final Four, maybe next year. All right, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the weather. Of course, Saturday, um, it's going to rain that morning leading up to kickoff. You're going to see rain throughout the game. Temperatures um, kick off 44 degrees. The highest it's going to get up to is 48. Wind, I believe, will be a factor. And, of course, that cold rain. I'm not talking about snow, not talking about ice. Talking about cold rain, it's just going to be flat out miserable, um, and it's going to rain the night before as well. So we'll see how that turf at Gaylord Memorial and Norman holds up. And of course, if both teams can handle this ball securely, or if it's like a bar of soap and you know turnovers then become even a bigger issue um, because of the weather. So something to keep an eye on too. Um, good news and bad news as far as personnel for Oklahoma. Good news, it looks like Jordan Evans, the linebacker who's had a terrific year, looks like he is going to play against the Cowboys. Of course, there was concern two weeks ago after the interception return for a touchdown in the second half against the Mountaineers when during that run at some point um, got hurt. Um, a, a leg muscle uh, plagued him, didn't come back for the rest of the game. Good thing that last week he had the week off because he gave him another week to recoup. From all accounts, Mike Stoops says he's practiced, though, limitedly, which you would expect, but it looks like all sides, all thumbs are up for Jordan Evans to play. And they'll need him against a very good Cowboy offensive attack. Bad news, though, Micaiah Quick, uh, you might remember the one-time wide receiver, turned corner, played quite a bit in September because of uh, Dakota Austin not getting the job done and Parrish Cobb having injury issues. 
So we saw a lot of Makai Quick, especially in the Ohio State game, but got hurt early in October against Texas. Hadn't seen him since, and Makai Quick's career, well, it ends quickly. Um, got into a little trouble, um, team violations, that's all I know. Bob Stoops told him to go hit the road and don't come back no more, no more, no more. What'd you say? So Makai Quick, he's done. Too bad. All right, so let's talk about um, a little bit of history, okay? If the Sooners win this game, do you realize it'll be the first time, first time since 2004 that they've gone undefeated in Big 12 play? And it will mark the first time ever that any Oklahoma Sooner team has won nine conference games in the same season. That's right, 9-0. and Of course, the league went to the cutthroat 10-team format beginning in 2011 because of realignment. And the Sooners, despite winning a share of the title in 2012 and uh, winning the championship last year, you know, had um, a loss in both seasons in conference play. So, uh, soon as, again, got a shot at an unblemished conference record. Heck of a job considering the hellacious non-conference month that they had in September. Of course, they haven't lost since the Ohio State game. So the Sooners are shooting for victory number nine in the row. Of course, Oklahoma State comes in playing pretty good football as well. Uh, now, we can focus finally on the particular matchups, okay? Sooners advantage, no question, when it comes to running the football. Even though the Sooners have amassed over 500 yards of total offense this season, of course, thanks in part to D.D. Westbrook and his incredible season since October, since early October, in which he's had 15 touchdowns and now is a Heisman Trophy candidate, and Baker Mayfield is as well, and you know he's had 35 TDs as well as uh, only nine interceptions or eight interceptions, single digits in interceptions, though, nonetheless, we know that the Oklahoma Sooner attack is predicated upon the run. P. Ryan and Mixon, that combination, when those guys are in the game, watch out because defenses have a lot more to worry about. And plus, the Sooners put themselves in those you know, third and short situations or second and semi-short or very short, and that allows the offense, Lincoln Riley's offense, we're in that up-tempo style to really open up the playbook. But to me, it's all about the ground game and with the weather – as miserable as it's supposed to be, and with Mixon and P. Ryan lately having ball security and not letting that ball out of their grasp lately, knock on wood, of course, that could really set up well for the Sooner running attack against the Oklahoma State running team in terms of defense. Um, that really isn't all that impressive as a team, although Vincent Taylor, the defensive tackle for the Cowboys, is having a good year, double digits in terms of tackle for loss. So you got to be able to contain him. Otherwise, you could get into those nasty, you know, second and long, third and 10 or third and 15 situations. And, of course, that's obvious pass, and that's where Oklahoma State, who has a plus nine takeaway margin, could really take advantage of Oklahoma in that situation. We know because Glenn Spencer's defenses, um, you know, are known for takeaways, okay? And another area, too, where Oklahoma could have an advantage when they do pass is D.D. Westbrook depending on how the Cowboys defend um, Westbrook, okay? Do they use Ashton Lemkin, or do they go with uh, Richards, you know, Roman Richards, the uh, other corner? Um, do they double-team him? Basically, Westbrook can become a major factor in this game, even if he doesn't touch the ball that much. What I mean by that is that he's going to get more attention, so that could allow a Mark Andrews, uh, to emerge, that could allow uh, Basquin, you know, um, to emerge as well in a game like this, or even throw it to P. Ryder Mixon out of the backfield. So regardless, just the presence of Westbrook alone could make for a very productive offensive day, even if Westbrook doesn't have a touchdown or multiple touchdown or a 200-yard passing day. Again, remember the weather, and remember the Sooners really want more than ever with it expected to be as nasty as it is to have the ground game be the dictator and not so much have Baker Mayfield be the dictator. Okay, so those are some things in the feather cap of Oklahoma. Now, another thing that could help them too is rush defense on the inside, and that's going to be a big, big thing, okay? Last week, of course, it was a disaster, despite the win, trying to contain West Virginia's ground attack. Okay? It, was, it was not a good day at all. They know that they can't allow the Cowboys to put up massive uh, rushing yards. Now, at the beginning of the year, the Cowboys uh, didn't do so well, less than three yards per carry in September. But the last you know, the last four games, they've averaged close to seven yards per carry. And last week in their impressive win over TCU, they had over seven yards per carry. 
But the big thing for the Sooners is is that you know other than West Virginia, they've, they've you know and maybe Ohio State in, in that matter, they've done a pretty good job in containing the opposition's ground attack, especially inside the tackles. Even in the loss against Houston, they did very well against the run. That has to be the case again. The Sooners against the run have done very well this year. As I've mentioned, the Cowboys have improved 165 yards on the ground per game, but again, it's still not the overall strength of the team. Okay, um, Justice Hill, his emergence has helped. Chris Carson has improved from a year ago, but still I think this is a, an area where the Sooners could be in fine shape. Now, the area where I don't think the Sooners are going to be in fine shape is going to be pass defense. Even though um, the freshman um, has improved outside of Jordan Thomas, that's Jordan Parker, this defense has still shown the vulnerability to giving up um, not only uh, passing yards, but massive passing yards, big passing plays. And Mason Rudolph, who did not start in this game last year, only played three plays because of the broken foot, shouldn't even have played that many plays because his only throw um, was to Jordan Parker, who ran it back for a touchdown. Gundy stuck uh, Rudolph in the game late in the first half. Desperation because Oklahoma State needed a spark, and that wasn't it. But this year, no um, such problems as far as injuries for Rudolph. He's been sensational. Only four interceptions. He has been lethal for Oklahoma State. So the big thing is Oklahoma's going to need turnovers, okay? Because I don't see the secondary being able to just – be able to flat out stop a guy like James Washington or Jalen McCleskey. Uh, that's going to be a tall order. So the Sooners are going to have to find a way to create turnovers in this matchup to feel better about themselves. Otherwise, I see this being a track meet because, again, I don't think either defense is capable of stopping the other. But maybe the Sooners can get some turnovers um, on this day. We'll see, um, again, the presence of a guy, you know, like a Jordan um, Evans, maybe even. Um, Emmanuel Beal um, could be a big factor in this game, too. So we'll see. We'll see how special teams holds up for Oklahoma as well. Um, we'll see because last year, of course, in Bedlam, it was very pivotal early on with the long kickoff return that even though it wasn't returned for a touchdown, it did lead to a quick score of the following play. We know two years ago special teams was a factor when a guy by the name of Tyree Hill made Bob Stoops pay for repunting and his long kickoff return for a touchdown very late, tied the game, and eventually Oklahoma State won it uh, in OT with a field goal on their possession. Of course, Tyreek Hill, you might see the game he played against uh, Denver the other night with a uh, rushing, receiving, as well as special teams return for a TD. Now, he's done quite well in the NFL. Um, so maybe it comes down to special teams, which, you know, we'll see who that favors. Really kind of hard to say in a game like this where the weather uh, will play a bigger role than you might think. Final thoughts on this game. Even though we've mentioned it so many times that, you know, that the forecast is calling for a 60-70% chance of rain and temperatures not to get out of the 40s, I still think both teams are going to be productive as far as moving the ball. The big thing for the Sooners, ball security. Hold on the ball, let P. Ryan, let Mixon have their moment and get maybe 35, 36 minutes of time of possession. You can do that. Then even though Rudolph, I think, will get his points and he might even have the better game statistically, it'll be Oklahoma that will have the better game scoreboard-wise. So I think the Sooners win. I'm going to go 42-35. 12 points is just way too many in terms of the point spread. So I think Oklahoma State with their terrific passing offense, Keeps it close, but too much P. Ryan, too much mixing, and Oklahoma playing at home, that doesn't hurt either. So Sooners to win another Big 12 championship, and this should be as sweet as sugar going back to New Orleans in the Sugar Bowl, where they were just a few years ago, and they beat some coach named Nick Saban and some team named Alabama, who they won't see this time around, but they will get an SEC opponent. Should be a fun game from Bedlam. Of course, if you're going, bring a poncho. And, of course, make sure that uh, you cheer loud for your team. Post game coming up sometime Saturday between the Sooners and Cowboys. Boomer Sooner.